Sarah Carpenter. I am a Backcountry Access Ambassador and I'm also one of the owners of the American Avalanche Institute. I'm here to talk to you about patient care uh, post-avalanche rescue. Once your partner is dug out of the snow, or at least once their chest and head is exposed, the first priority are the ABCs. A stands for airway. Getting caught in an avalanche and tumbled down can be a really violent experience, and oftentimes avalanche victims end up with snow plugs in their mouth. So the first thing that we need to do is establish an airway. Open your partner's mouth, clear out any sort of snow plug, and make sure they have that clear airway. B stands for breathing. We want our patients to be breathing. So check and see that they are. Check to see if their chest is rising and falling. Check to see the air is moving in and out of their nose or mouth. And if they're not breathing, it's a stop and fix problem as well. Get them breathing. If your patient isn't breathing, you breathe for them. Give them a breath every five or six seconds. And really, what you should do is take a CPR class. Follow those protocols. C stands for circulation. And what I wanna do is I wanna to check to see that my patient has a pulse. So I'm gonna feel for a pulse, either around their neck or on their wrist. And then I'm gonna also make sure that that circulation is contained within their body and they're not bleeding it out. So I'm gonna look for massive bleeds. When we're wearing Gore-Tex clothing, we need to get underneath that clothing. And what we're looking for are the big bleeds, the gushers, the things that are gonna cause us to lose so much blood that we end up in serious condition. So looking for massive bleeds and again, if we find them, we need to stop and fix. If our partner doesn't have a pulse, we need to stop and fix that and do CPR. In a wilderness setting, along with ABC, we also think about D and E. D is for disability and decision. Does your patient have a mechanism for a spinal injury? Getting caught in an avalanche is a really violent experience and it, it can cause spine injuries. If your patient is complaining of spine pain, numbness or tingling in their fingers or toes, or has an altered mental status, or you're just not sure if they have a spine issue, stabilize that spine. Make sure you're protecting it, and that may mean get them warm and dry, protect them from the elements, and wait for help to come. Decision is also important at this point. Can we stay in play, take our time in the backcountry, stabilize this patient, and slowly get them out, or do we need an efficient, fast evacuation? E stands for expose and environment. Expose any major bleeds and stop and fix them. And E, treat for the environment. The snow can be a really cold place. It's hard to stay warm and dry out in a winter environment. When someone's buried in avalanche debris in the snow, they are insulated from this outside temperature. As soon as we dig them up, they're exposed to the cold. So we need to get them up off the snow and we need to get them wrapped up in warm whatever we have, warm sleeping bag, warm bivy sack, any of that. So to get them up off the snow, put them on a sleeping pad if you have it. Most of us don't carry a sleeping pad when we're out here backcountry skiing or riding. So put them on a backpack, put them on the seat of your snowmobile. Those seats come off, you can put it on the ground and you can get your patient up off the snow. Or if you need to, cut down pine boughs and put them on those pine boughs. Anything you can do to get your person up off the snow and then get them in a bivy sack, get them in a sleeping bag, get them in all their insulated layers keep them warm and dry. It's really important. At this point, what we, once we've treated for those life-threatening injuries, A, B, C, D, E, take a look around where you are. Make sure you're comfortable treating your patient in the location that you are. If not, get ready to move your patient out of the environment that you're in into a safer place to treat them. Once I've got someone stabilized and I'm comfortable with where I'm treating them, I'm gonna do a little more thorough patient assessment. I'm gonna go from the top of the person's head all the way down to their toes. And all of this is taught in a wilderness first aid course. So go out and get the training. What I'm looking for is anything that hurts or feels different from one side to the other. Common injuries when people get caught in avalanches are broken bones, torn muscles, and often head injuries. So I'm looking for those common injuries and I wanna treat them. If someone has a head injury, I'm gonna stabilize their head and neck and I'm gonna monitor their level of consciousness and decide to hopefully get them out pretty quick. If they have a broken bone, I'm gonna splint it. And again, in those first aid courses, they're gonna teach you how to do that. But I wanna stabilize whatever injury that person has. The interesting thing about being out in the back country rather than being in the front country near a hospital is that we need to treat these patients, our ski partners, our riding partners, for an extended period of time. 
So not only do I need to treat their injuries, but I also need to make sure that they're warm, that they're dry, that they're hydrated and fed, that if they need to pee, that we figure out how to do that. So I need to think about a longer term patient care. With that, I carry something that I can make a shelter out of. I carry fire starter and a lighter and a way to make water. And I carry enough equipment that I can spend the night out if I have to. I also carry ways to alert people that I need help. So I may carry a cell phone. I may carry something like a DeLorme in reach. And if I'm gonna contact outside help, I wanna be ready with any information of where I am, what the current state of my patient is, and what equipment I might need for help to get them out. It's important to go out in the backcountry prepared for anything that might come up. Have a well-stocked first aid kit. Make sure that, that kit contains stuff that you can't improvise in the backcountry. And also know what you can use out of your backpack and your partner's backpack to build splints, to make people warm and dry, and to keep them comfortable overnight. Make sure you're prepared and also make sure that your partners are prepared. Because when we're traveling in the backcountry, it's a team sport. We all need to be ready to take care of each other.